Hi, this is Emma, and welcome to Esoteric Detective. Recently there has been a lot of discussion about the amount of seats in JFK's car. Since those with the Mandela effect, remember only four seats in the car when JFK was assassinated. Not the six seats that there are now. I have done a number of videos on this. But having found more information, I thought I would make a new video just about the number of seats. This is the car that history, says today, JFK was riding in on the day he was assassinated. That is a six-seater car. Take a good look. Do you remember it this way? This is what history shows now. However, this is not how people with the Mandela effect remember the car. And also, it would seem not how parts of documented history, remember it as well. Let's take a few examples. A lot of this was compiled using the fine research of the Mandela Effect Proof blog. A link to this blog, will be placed in the description. And I would like to thank the owner for their great research. So stay tuned, as Esoteric Detective investigates. Top 4 Mandela Effect Proofs for a 4 seater Car in the JFK Assassination Number 4. A number of historical museums and other places, have replicas of JFK's car which show 4 seats. Not 6. Let's look at the car at the Dahl Auto Museum. Please note the color of the wheels and the shape. You will see this repeated, at least within these two museum examples. Have a good look. Now have a look at the replica of the JFK car, at the Museum of Historic Auto Attractions. Note that everything is the same, as that in the other museum. This is a display of President Kennedy and Jacqueline Kennedy, Mrs. Kennedy, uh, riding along in Lincoln in Dallas back on November 22nd. It's, it, this whole museum is just put together so well. Uh, it's, it's really a beautiful place to come and relive a huge part of history. Number three, the United States Secret Service reenactment of the event shows a four-seater car. This is from an agency with not only a high level of attention to detail, but a responsibility to record history as it happened, for investigative and rejudicial purposes. Let's take a look. And it is believed this paper was used to wrap the gun. Agent Hallett is sitting in the position, it is believed the assassin did, and he is pointing in the direction the rifle would have been pointed. Notice how low the window is to the floor. We look out of the window over the reconstructed position of the boxes for a few seconds before we remove the boxes to photograph the simulated motorcade. This is a simulated motorcade as it turns from Maine onto Houston Street. The two motorcycle policemen are the two men who were in the same relative position to the president's car at the time of the assassination. They assisted in determining the approximate speed of the president's car during the filming of these scenes. As you will notice in this scene, the turn from Houston onto Elm Street is quite sharp. The two motorcycle policemen said the turn was so slow they had trouble keeping their balance. In a moment, you can see the tree blocking the view of the car for a split second. The shot that struck the president's neck occurred shortly after the car comes into view from behind the tree and the shot that struck his head when he was about 85 feet down the road. This view of the simulated motorcade is through a four power 18 millimeter Ordnance Optical Incorporated rifle scope, the same make and model scope that was used by the assassin. You can see the degree of amplification offered by the scope by looking at the people outside of the scope as well as the parked cars. It is impossible to show in a movie the scale dimensions of everything exactly as observed out of the window due to the various distances from projector to screen. However, these scenes viewed through the scope give you the same field of view as that the assassin saw through his scope. No attempt was made to keep the crosshairs of the scope on the exact points the shots entered the president. Would the United States Secret Service 
be likely to reenact an event, with the wrong number of people in the car? That is, this car has only four people, and is missing two people. That is, it is a four-seater car. However, to be fair they did state in the film, which is 18 minutes long, that the car was smaller than the one used by JFK. So maybe they were using a mock car and not the stretched six-seater limo? What do you guys think? Take a look at the full video and judge for yourself. But to those with the Mandela effect, they would often call something like this residue. That is if the past is changing, it only changes some of it. Not all of it. So fragments of the past are still left, for people to catch. At least for now. Number 2. The Trial of Lee Harvey Oswald. A movie that came out in 1964. The movie shows clearly a four-seater car. Let's take a look. Floor sniper? Yes. I fired three shots at a moving target between 100 and 300 feet away, at about a 40-degree angle downhill. Did you hit the moving target? Yes, with all three shots. Was an accurate record made of the time that elapsed between your first and your third shot? Yes, six and two-tenths seconds. 6.2 seconds. That means you fired the three shots in six-tenths seconds time less than is indicated by the film. Objection! He's leading. This witness has no personal knowledge of these films. Sustained. In your opinion as an expert rifleman, how good a marksman would the man who killed the president have to be? He would have to have been better than average, but he needn't have been an expert. The distance was not great, assuming that he had a telescopic sight. Objection! Well, you could say, that might have just been a mistake. Well, no. Because the second movie, also called The Trail of Lee Harvey Oswald, which was filmed in 1977, also shows a four-seater car. Let's take a look. Lee Harvey Oswald was killed before he could stand trial for the assassination of John F. Kennedy. In creating the following drama, certain names and events have been changed. While inferences are made at the trial, the testimony in the historical scenes of November 21st through November 24th, 1963, including the film of the assassination of John F. Kennedy, have a factual basis and were recreated for this motion picture at the actual locations where the events took place. Prosecution is unwilling or reluctant or afraid to test its thesis. That wasn't me. I didn't do that. No, you didn't. He did. Could a movie, that probably cost millions of dollars, not find a stretched limo with six seats in Hollywood? To film the event, they had to go instead with a four-seater car. Not once, in one version of the movie. But twice? Number one. Reenactments by other people. There are many reenactments that show only four seater cars. Neglecting the other two people in the car. Let's take a look. How is it, so many people, have missed the other two people in the car? The two people, that take two extra seats, which people with the Mandela effect, never remembered. Including the very secret service, that protected JFK. At least, in their own reenactment of the event, caught on old footage. What do you guys think? Don't you think this is all very strange? Or do you think this is just false memories, and we are all imagining a past that never happened? Stay tuned and subscribe to Esoteric Detective, to keep up to date with the strange and unusual. And please give a thumbs up.
if you liked the video. And do let me know what you think in the comments section. Until next time. Hello London, this is Leonard Parkin calling Radio Newsreel from Washington. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony of Texas were shot today from an ambush as President Kennedy's motorcade left the center of Dallas where the president was on a speaking tour. People screamed and lay down on the ground as shots were heard. An Associated Press photographer, it's reported, a man called Altgens, said he saw blood on the president's head. There was absolute pandemonium around the scene. Reporters saw President Kennedy lying flat on his face on the seat of his car. Men and women were screaming. This is all we have here in Washington at this moment, and for the moment I return you to Radio Newsreel in London.